at uh, 716. Uh, first up, uh, public works update from the municipal superintendent. Do you have a hand out? No. Amber had a hand out. Yeah. Can, I, can I email? Can I uh, email? She brought you? treats too. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> For everyone. For yeah. everyone. Cookies. She brought us all treats. Yeah, coffee and cookies. Sorting them Christmas. 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 <laughs> you got five bucks, Chris? What's going on? <laughs> okay. Uh, so just a few little items just to uh, bring you guys up to date in terms of infrastructure renewal. There were some questions last time. Uh, two meetings ago regarding kind of a plan or just some background. I know this isn't really what this was for, but um, in 2012 we did sit down, the town did with J.R. Cousins to come up with a game plan as to what streets were in the worst shape and they kind of relied on us to provide that information to them, which where we've seen the most problems. This is uh, prior to my tenure, but uh, there was uh, six or seven streets that were uh, identified, Bagshaw, Big Knoll, Hone, La Rose, Reader, Russick, and Satie. Um, and the total cost of uh, Renewal of those of those streets would have been over twenty three million dollars at that time, so that number could be inflated a little bit more uh, in for today. Uh, from that report, La Rose was identified as the greatest need, followed by Satie. So that's why when we were applying for the grant, uh, La Rose was our, our first key uh, target. So the tender for La Rose closed last week. There was twelve tenders that were sent out, and only two replied, which was kind of really uh, disheartening to see. Yeah. Uh, we budgeted $4 million based on the projections by the engineering firm that were provided to us and the grant money that was allocated as such. Uh, but the lowest bid was Maple Leaf Construction uh, at $5.3 million. So they missed the target by about 40%, yeah. which was really uh, disappointing to see. Uh, but we are working with uh, J.R. Cousins to determine what our next move might be if we have to retender for next year, potentially getting it out much earlier in the season, uh, allowing for... Uh, more companies to be more active and more competitive in their bid. Uh, also, they'll be speaking with, uh, Chair Cousins is going to speak with Maple Leaf to kind of see where where the pricing kind of went wrong in terms of what they projected and what, uh, what uh, was provided by Maple Leaf. And also looking for further funding sources uh, and also breaking up the work, seeing what the town can maybe do ourselves to help bring that overall cost down. So the rose is not happening? Uh, at this time, I would say probably not, based on what uh, the preliminary discussions, unless we find a pot of money to do it with. But we're still working on different avenues to find out where we can bring the cost down. If like, so if we got our crews to rip out the asphalt and rip out the sidewalk and do all the site prep for them, like how much would that? But it's not going to be. It's just going to be skimming off the top. So where does that then? Where does that leave us then? In 2016 with La Rose? We, we've, we're, I'm pretty confident, and I think they were also confident that getting it out sooner will be one of the biggest uh, hurdles that we'd overcome, to get it out in you know, January, February, so that companies can plan their, their next year construction a little bit better. Um, I think the fact that we only got two tenders back by sending out 12, I think that was an indication of that. Because that, you know, we were hearing a lot of, even from the, co the companies down south, that there's not a lot of work down south, so there should be a great deal of uh, interest in it. We didn't really, that didn't really happen. We, how, we, how we envisioned it, but uh, we're still, we're not giving up on it this year. I'm not, I, didn't, I, I didn't want to come across that way, but um, we also want to be realistic in our, in our. For sure. No, I get it. It's the end of June. Yeah. And, you know, we're getting that tender out in, at the start of June, I'm assuming, right? Um, it's pretty tough. These guys have already planned their summers. They're already starting to plan next year, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's tough. Councilor Rock? Yeah, that was leads to my question is if we can't get anything done this year will we be tendering in the fall yeah like, the soon, the, is this soon now that we've got the money set aside and everything you just go through your tender process till we get an answer we like correct <laughs> i guess in a, and, in, a way, in a way yes yeah and the target being you know starting it in in may starting the work in may or something rather than uh, yeah the sooner that the can break process. down the better yeah for sure Okay. We're hoping that would eliminate some of the costs, and we think that was part of the biggest problem. And speaking with J.R. Cousins, I think they kind of alluded to that fact as well. Yeah, it would be nice if we had a, it all wrapped up yeah. this year, and then they just the start date was pushed to next year, but everything else was in place. Is that a 40% difference? Timing? I get it. Like, mm -hmm. Put it out in June. I, you're I gonna only, they're only yeah. going to come if they're going to pay. 
pay, right? Yeah, I don't think it's going to make up that full difference. I, I can't see. Um, but I think that's what they're going to talk to. Uh, J.R. Cousins is going to speak to Maple Leaf to kind of see where they can uh, find where, the, where they were off on their, on their costing. Um, yeah. Do we know Target, like, in Winnipeg area? Like, do we go to Saskatchewan markets? Looking for those kind of people to do the work? It's big firms there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume they, they targeted firms that they were uh, comfortable working with, so I'm not sure if that, it, I don't have the full list in front of me of who they actually targeted specifically, but we know for sure 12 firms were identified uh, in the tendering process. So, Stan, when you say the, to who targeted, J.R. Cousins targeted? Yeah. Oh, okay. They, That's who took care of all the, the tendering process? Correct, yeah. Okay. So is there a back to J.R. Cousins? <laughs> off by 40%. No, yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot. lot. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. They're gonna say no. I know. I know. Well, he, he he expressed. Uh, you know, he said. You know, in all the years I've done this, this is the first time I've been out not out to lunch, but uh, you know, off the, mark, lunch. off the mark on, on something like this. So he's also kind of confused about the whole thing. And you know, being a northern community, I think you know we expected maybe the price to be a little higher than what you know they were thinking. But that's crazy. But forty percent is yeah. a little bit outside of our. Jared Cousins does a lot of work up north, though. That, and that's what we were banking yeah. on, is yeah. that they've been up here, they've done a lot of work, and yeah. that they would have firm, a yeah, firm idea, you know, of the numbers, so. Yeah. Mm, it's tough. That's 40% premium on being in the north and getting the tender out in June, I guess it could be, but I don't know. And we, 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 we're still hopeful that when it comes back around uh, next year that, like, the grant money is good for three years, so we're, we're not in... Uh, we're not losing it or anything like that. We just will have to, you know, write the next report as this. We're fall, we've fallen a little behind schedule, you know. So. Yeah, for sure. But you can always bank on five percent going up each year, five percent yeah. a year. You know. At so least, yeah. Five percent on four million is. Mm -hmm. Big check of dough. A little bit of, a little yeah. cash. Okay. Anything else? That was just that one point. I just paused for questions. Oh. Two. Okay. Okay. Uh, regional landfill. There's been lots of questions coming uh, regarding that. We had a, the last time we sat down as a committee was uh, April 20th, we did a teleconference. Uh, one of the parties uh, was not really uh, happy with the proposed location and they had their own kind of idea of where they felt it should go. Uh, at that time, ANSI uh, was to mediate the issue and come up with a resolution uh, since they are the major funding party. They were gonna help resolve that issue between the, the party, the two parties. Um, apparently there was a sit-in, I believe, at the ANSI offices, which really kind of disrupted a bit of their uh, work. On this issue? No, on oh. something else that kind of disrupted their office. They're they still, were, I think, are... I'm, I'm not sure. I just, that's the what I was kind of... Really? The I email so, I yeah. got, that there was a sit-in, kind of, they were only available by cell phone. Yeah. It was really hard for them to work remotely or something. So, uh, we did hear that they were in town last week uh, to sit down with OCN and uh, further discussions. Uh, and I haven't heard back from OCN as of yet, but we'll continue to... I would think any negotiations that would happen with... Uh, Chem away when they're going to be put on hold too until they get that little emergency out of the way. Yeah. yeah that's true. I don't mean to say little emergency. It's a pretty big deal evacuating the community. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Any questions? Okay. No. No. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the, the Lagoon, we had a kickoff meeting with J.R. Cousins and Manitoba Water Services Board on the 19th of May. Um, J.R. Cousins is working as well on that project for us as our advocate to determine what upgrades need to be completed in order to meet our licensing and treatment requirements. Um, the work that needs to be done obviously is going to, you know, cost some some monies. We're, we're, he's trying to work, J.R. Cousins is trying to work within our current licensing agreement. If we do too many modifications to the lagoon and open it up uh, too greatly, our license will therefore not be appropriate, I guess, for the lagoon, and then it would have to open the license. So once you open your license, you open yourself up to other regulations that have already been, you know, have already come down the pipeline. So we're trying to work within our license to see what we can do, uh, but still looking forward into the future. Uh, looking at some of the population stats can numbers, I, I don't necessarily agree with our population and how stats can is representing it as declining all the time. Just from just living here and being in the community, I don't, people leave, but that, and that house gets full. Right? And then more apartments go up, and then the new housing goes up. And so I don't really see the area as declining. I, in fact, I see it the other way. And so we kind of are trying to make sure our numbers reflect what we actually feel in the community, not just what Stats Can is projecting for the community. That way, if, when there is growth in the community, uh, we will uh, be, re be ready for it. It's a great opportunity to remind people again that uh, 
uh, like I've talked to a lot of people who didn't get counted in the census, a lot of people. And you'll recall in the other census from 2011, there were blocks that were missed. And instead of Stats Canada coming forward and saying, you know what, we did miss it, they just don't make mistakes and they just refuse to deal with it. This time around, uh, I believe they didn't get people hired until two days before the count. So just want to put that out there that um, because we're paid per, per person. We, yeah. get, we get funding per person. And if you're not counted, there's no dough. And the efficiency of the lagoon you know, will play a great deal into the population. Yeah. So we want to make sure that our numbers are accurate, not only for today, but also projecting what we have uh, available for building lots in town and you know, being able to project that growth so that we're not sitting here in front of you, you know, in five or six years saying, hey, we need to upgrade the lagoon again. So that's kind of... Good. Uh, animal control, we've purchased uh, several new traps and a new animal control device so that would be a net gun for those really difficult uh, strays and more aggressive animals we're not uh, it's not going to be deployed unless the animal has you know shown some aggressive behavior uh, we're not going to be going around and you know your, your poodle gets out we're not going to go and net gun your poodle that's not yeah. the purpose of it uh, uh, we need we do need volunteers to chat if you're interested <laughs> Have you, uh, have you figured out yet how you can be in all places at all times so exactly when an uh, issue comes up with, a, with an animal that we can... The, the problem, the problem with there? omnipresence is not, uh, is not, we haven't been able to resolve it yet. Uh, the Keep math is close though, we're getting close. Keep at it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we recently dealt with, again, animal control dealing with a, a much publicized animal attack and we worked with the OCN to rectify the problem. I think we did uh, pretty good working with them. They were, they were quick to respond and we got it settled. Where are we at with that? I get asked about that a lot. Uh, it's good. Everyone uh, uh, is happy. Okay. With right. getting it to graphic detail. Uh, garbage collection. Uh, we continue to see lots of uh, complaints regarding garbage stands, garbage bins. What's happening? You know, why aren't they closing my gate? Why aren't they closing the bin back up? Um, we're, we've we've started the just the very beginning of investigating the feasibility of moving away from garbage stands altogether and using the automated bin system like what they have in uh, Winnipeg, I think Thompson, Snow Lake. Uh, it seems to be working for them and efficient. Um, I don't know if Councillor Roy, if you had a chance to speak them, with them when you were in Snow Lake regarding that. About the bins, the rollout bins? The bin, yeah. No, you didn't care. I don't have. I so that's exciting. Very, very beginning of that process, just looking at numbers and what the cost would be and seeing if we can find grant money to help do that. Then, then there's no more bins. They don't have to worry about, you know, making a mess in the back lane, roll it out yeah. on your garbage day. Yeah. And it, it would it coincide really well with what uh, was happening at the recycling center too with their curbside. It would be a nice, kind of nice and simple for everyone to. to it's a, um, again at the FCM convention down in Winnipeg. There were plenty of that stuff on display. You know, hey, come over here, bring your checkbook with you. You know, mm -hmm. so. Uh, as was mentioned in the CEO's report re regarding reduced uh, speed school zones, we are uh, working with. Uh, you know, all of the uh, stakeholders. Um, hey, do we know whose job that is? Is it the town's job? Is it the school board's job? Is it the provincial government's job? Everybody thinks it's great to go 30, but nobody knows how to go about doing it. Uh, we're just going to work with the school division, I believe. Uh, I think they're taking it to their board this evening to kind of see where they stand and how they feel. Um, the survey that we'll put out in the water billing, I think, will hopefully gauge the public uh, support or not, you know, not being in support of it. We feel like it'll have a lot of community support. So. Yeah. I think there's tremendous support for it. Yeah, so I think we're just going to push forward with it from our end just to continue to work with uh, the, all the stakeholders, the police. Obviously, they have to enforce it. If they're not going to buy in, then yeah. there's no point in doing it. The school division, rec. Uh, I remember living in Saskatchewan on the first day of school, September. Man, tickets were everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. You know, you got to pay attention. Yeah, so. And that's something that will be discussed in the survey is, you know, do you want it in, you know, the enforcement all year, just during the school year, the times. So we want to get a, a good sense of what the community feels like. So, okay. uh, energy advocate, like uh, again in the CEO's report, was talking about the interview that will be taking place next week with one prospective candidate. Again, disappointing. There's only one, but yeah. echoing again what the CEO had to say that it, you know, they are a pretty good candidate. So good. And uh, we've done our utility study. We sent it away for, uh, for uh, the first reading of the bylaw. We sent it away with, along with the uh, rate study to PUB for their review. We're expecting um, probably to get some sort of comeback with questions 
possibly in the new year, maybe before. By when? I'm sorry? We're probably going to have questions come back to us possibly in the new year. In the maybe new year. a little bit before. Okay. All so right. Six months from now, yeah. essentially, right? Okay. Um, it's typically a six month waiting period for that type of process just because of the sheer amount of uh, utility rates they, and the complexity there. Um, and also working. Uh, just kind of echoing a little bit more on the geothermal feasibility study. Um, essentially, it's what Randy's indicated, we've been in contact with an engineering firm working with Hydro. Um, we had three proposals submitted to us, and uh, each one actually ended up coming under budget. So it's, uh, it's a good sign, as long as we do all three at the same time. So. All three what? Sorry, Chris. Feasibility studies. So all three studies. The engineering firm would come up, uh, and to reduce travel costs, um, it's going to be split amongst the three instead of just doing one. All travel costs would sure. come to the one feasibility study. So, who are the other feasibility studies? We're like all for three the town buildings. property. It's just three buildings, basically. It's one oh, firm, okay. but uh, okay. three buildings. Sure. Yeah. So we're looking at civic center here um, for heating. Uh, we were also looking at the library and the water treatment plant. And because the all three buildings are in close proximity, right. uh, there's a, a chance that we can kind of piggyback uh, you know, okay. three Good. buildings. Yeah. And then there also might be some um, uh, grant opportunities as well through uh, the federal government. Okay. All have. I have a question. Yes. The garbage dump is currently open. Monday, to, no, Tuesday to Saturday. Mm -hmm. From Right now it's from 11 in the morning until 8 p.m. We've discussed this before um, about maybe trying to change those hours or change the days that we're open. Has any there been any movement on that or can we put that back on the radar? I know it's extremely frustrating for a lot of citizens. Any, any change that we do will uh, inevitably, the, any scenario we've ran will inevitably end up costing us more. So if the town is okay with incurring an additional cost, like we can split their shifts and we can do all sorts of fun stuff to keep it open during lunch and all that, but as soon as the moment one of them calls in sick or is on vacation, the town will incur a cost because now we're having to provide another employee outside their normal working hours potentially. Um, and the, we've tried a few different scenarios and we've tried to kind of work out how the schedule would work to open it more, but it will cost more money. That's yeah. pretty much how that. So we've kind of taken a step back and since we're working, focusing on the regional, we feel if the public can just, you know, bear with us for a few more years, then, it, you know, we'll be over the hump. I know it's a long time, but... Can you uh, make sure, though, that somehow you look into it come budget time? Like, how can we... Absolutely, yeah. Take this square and make it into triangles and still cover the same area with the same dollars. I know, it's, you know, we ask this every year, you know. And it's to not find easy. the pipe stretcher, I guess. Yeah, that's what we need, is a pipe stretcher. You don't want to look Yeah, we need one. Okay. That's Brian. Okay. Uh, Brian? Summer, summer hours run into the evening uh, as opposed to being the same as winter hours. Why is that? Uh, I, th I believe the, f the thought behind the summer hours for the dump was always for the contractors that will be working late and being able to be open to a later hour for them to be able to still drop off their material at the end of the, their work day. Their work day might not end the same as... I believe that's, that's, it's been like that for I don't know how many years, so I'm not really... Actually, I 100% don't know for the dump anyway. I know for the winter it was generally because it became dark at like 5 o'clock, so there was no point having anybody there that night. Yeah. And in the summertime, usually people are doing their yards and their stuff after work. And it gave them an opportunity for the extended hours in the daylight time. Okay. I'm just wondering, given given the changes we've made and having uh, fees at the gate and whatnot, have we been do tracking? Like, do we get more uh, homeowners bringing refuse to the to our dump now, or less? Or, well, I guess we wouldn't know if we weren't tracking it before. Uh, we would have a tracking of it. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I would speculate the same. If we base it off the last time that we increased or started charging, there was no change the last time. Because uh, before we weren't charging anything when you came to a landfill, and we started charging five bucks. Um, the amount of waste that came to a landfill actually increased somehow. Um, I guess no one 
the five dollars was that just makes no sense at all but anyway yeah that's five yeah. bucks i mean yeah it's not really or maybe we just had a little more development at the time yeah it could have been a population increase could have been yeah. um, with the last increase it'd be a little bit too short uh, of a time period to to look and make a definitive decision or, or, or comment on that but currently there hasn't been a change if we just go on a month-to-month -month basis our rates increase to everyone pay the same amount whether you're commercial or residential and you still get the same amount of residential waste that's brought in from you know homeowners whether it's RM or in town to landfill as we do the contractors as well so okay. thank you You wouldn't let me borrow your vehicle. I did. Sorry, I couldn't hear that. Well, we had spoken before when it yeah. no, I heard gave us a chance to go to the FCM trade show. We probably spent, Randy can correct me, in excess of $10,000 to send four counselors. And the two guys that make decisions on this kind of stuff, we probably could have benefited the most, are sitting here. And twice in our discussion, we came up, well, this was at the FCM trade show, right? Like, this is a chance for you guys to meet the people that do the engineering, that, you know, run the pipes and stuff. So we spent all this money, and no offense, I don't think any of us are air engineers, Andrew's gone, right? So the guys who need to learn this stuff are sitting there and asking us, and we're sending the non-experts down and spending lots of money to do it. And that's, to me, it's just not efficient, so. I know I mentioned to you before, I mean, I, I know you maybe don't feel like you should go or, you know, because you're not a counselor. I don't know what the reason is, but I think you guys, when there's, opportunities like that you got to take them because it's all going to be networking who you're going to get to know who does this who does that if you don't know those people it's that much tougher to get things fixed and you could you know there's certain contractors in town that can do things but there's some that can't and, and you're dealing with guys that you got to go outside and you got to know who they are and the products are peddling. and if we're going to spend that kind of money at the council i think we need to be sure these guys are at the table i think that's a great idea Actually, I concur, and I had a little speech written when I was down there that um, Jody should have been there, and people like Sam should be there. I brought back some information, but I stu still feel that they should have a spot yeah. down there. I don't yeah. disagree. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, just to add to that, there is a trade show coming up in Vegas for heavy equipment, so just, <laughs> just putting that's that out there. That's next since, year. Since we're, all since we're all excited right now, just putting okay. it out there. Thank you. <laughs> okay, item number two, yeah, public safety 2.1, <laughs> uh, review of fire bylaw number 4547. Councillor Gibb. So in light of everything that's been uh, transferred for the last four, six, eight years, I've lived here for probably 12 years, almost 12 years, can't remember anymore. But this is probably about the third time something like this has happened where there's been an issue with the fire department one way or the other. Maybe not to this magnitude, but something doesn't seem correct, right? So it's like we have different actors all the time, but we end up with the same crappy movie. So, so when you see that crappy movie over and over, well, maybe we should hire someone to write a new script, right? So in light of everything, and, and I mean, I got my personal opinions on the whole situation. But that's not for here. But we need to have a discussion about it. I spoke with Municipal Affairs about the issue. They recommended we go to the Officer of the Fire Commission. They provide some services to oversee how we do things. And, and going forward, we got to make it better. Right? You can't have this nonsense going on and on. It's not good for anyone. So I'm recommending, as I wrote out here, a request for an external review of the Fire Prevention and Emergency Services Bylaw, Bylaw number 4547. It's important that we maintain an external point of reference res with respect to municipal services in the town of Paw. To that end, I believe we should request an appropriate outside agency, such as the Office of the Fire Commissioner or the Department of Municipal Relations, to review our fire bylaw and our associated provision of services so that we can know whether our level of service and organizational structure adequately represents an expected level of provision of service for the town of our size. If anyone has any questions, feel free. Well, I mean, this is not good. For this, well, I mean, this isn't good for our community. I think everyone can agree on that point, right? So we're two years into the term. Nothing's getting done. This is all we're spending our time with. 
right? So, well, I mean, I don't know. Are we, can we open it up to everybody? I don't know that we're not doing that. No, I know, but there's hands all over the room. I think this is a council decision. It was basically he brought it to the table to say, are you interested in looking at this? I know, but I believe, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, you're looking to get comment from people. Of if, you know what? I've sat on their side and not been allowed to speak, so I know how that feels, but okay. I think the okay. rest okay. of council is let them. Yeah, I mean, in reaction to, to what you've said, I, I agree with the intent, I agree with the ideas and whatnot. Uh, I always get a little nervous when somebody tells me they're going to give me something for free, and then I get a bill later. Uh, so I, I agree with, uh, you know, council could, could direct the CAO to, to look into it further and, and with the intent of figuring out what and when we can, we can do this and bring it, bring it forward, bring it back to council. Uh, I think it's important that... Uh, that we know what we're we're jumping into, uh, and and on stuff like this, I'd like to see a dollar attached, so which indicates we've investigated that far and know that uh, what's free and what we may have to pay for, and that sort of thing. But yes, definitely, the idea of of looking farther and, and getting third-party input uh, in these situations doesn't hurt. Sorry, you talk municipal affairs, or you talk to OFC? Is this a service that OFC provides? I talked to municipal affairs, and they don't offer this kind of service as far as the fire bylaws go. Yeah. So they recommended contacting OFC and gave a person's name. I left out that for no. Nope. Brought it forward to the rest of the council. And to Brian's point, if there's a cost involved, I'm fine with that. Yeah, we should because definitely check into fixed, it. Right? I'm I'm all for checking into it, and we'll see what it is. You know. Uh, yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind checking in. I don't mind checking into it at all. I uh, I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Um, are we going yeah, we'll to open the floor? Talk. Yeah, we'll let John. John, can you, you just come up here and there. state your name and address for the record? John Terhorst, three three seven Saint Antoine. I think uh, getting the OFC to um, do a report would be an excellent idea. Um, just make sure you give a, a reasonable deadline because if you don't, if you leave it open ended, it'll take them a year to do anything. So, yeah. but it is a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, John. It, it seems like you've been involved with something like this. You've been involved with this before, sending stuff to OFC for review, or <clears throat> specifically this situation, no. Okay. But on, you know, we've 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 asked them for input on other things and. It just bounces around the bureaucracy for forever. Okay. But I have okay. a favor. Just yep. give him a deadline. Yeah, just give me a deadline right on. Yeah. Okay. So I can proceed with that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think we have a consensus. I think so, yeah. Okay. Can we have it looked into? Like, yeah, like I guess if we find out what costs there are involved before we. Yeah. Get a resolution. If any, I would imagine if any. that it would be a matter of, well, I don't even know if you're not going to be spending money, if it's a matter of, matter of just asking them for an opinion. Yeah. I think you've kind of made that directive right here if it's yeah. not costing us money. Cool. I think that's their job. <laughs> you know, that's they're, what they're, they're, they're the office yeah. of the fire yeah. commissioner. Should be all things fire. Okay, uh, anything else on that, sorry? All right, 3.1 uh, planning district. Sorry, Randy, I didn't need to rush. No, um, this is as it relates to, as you're aware, we've been trying to get a meeting together with the Arma Kelsey and our community planner um, as it relates to the joint planning district. This has not been uh, working out well for us over the last little while. We can't get both councils to meet. So um, planning branch has recommended that we appoint three members of our council to a joint planning district committee so that we could move forward in having at least the council sit down. Yeah. So if we could get a re recommendation as to which three councillors that you would like to appoint. We'd like to be on that. Uh, we got to move on that. We got to move on that. Oh, Stop the enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Rock. Who else? I don't know anything about that. I'll go. One more. <sighs> Joint planning district. I'd like to. I just don't know when the meetings are. Like, it's tough. It's Summer's a busy time for me. So. I don't think you're going to be meeting this yeah. <laughs> this summer anytime soon because our community planner that is very familiar with this is on leave until September. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay. There we are. Good. Okay. We'll go over that then. So that'll be a resolution moving forward to approve the three as that committee? Please. Okay. All right. Let's talk some disc golf.
Okay. <laughs> As you can see from Amber's uh, email here, there's a lot of information. I don't know how many people are aware of disc golf and what it's all about. No, um, so cool. What it is is you can see she's identified several sites, like nine sites for this program to take place and it's basically all along the riverfront in areas which were pretty much designated for recreation open space use. I did talk to her because I honestly did not quite know what exactly these nets were looking like. It sounds like they're about a five foot net and they've got like a, a metal mesh on them. So yeah there is going to be some vandalism, we're going to expect that, there might be some spray painting, but it seems like it's not going to be something that should be a regular occurrence. So my understanding in her memo is asking council for consideration to put these where they're located on the attached sheet. It's also been excellent to see that some of the other community groups have come forward and donated money towards this project. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can get I think this is a no cost event to the to the yeah. town of the Pod. Awesome. And it's a great it's a great thing. I mean, you know, you go for watch, you can ah. Have we been asked to sponsor a whole yet? The town? Nope. Nope. I have at UCN. Yeah, I'm just wondering where the request for the time. I think it's a five hundred dollars a whole. There's no money in the budget, yeah. so you don't ask us for any more. So, does anybody have any problems with the uh, lands that they've outlined on here? No. Not me. One question I have is okay. at the bottom. Of Patrick. Where there's road. Yep. And there's hydro there. If you walk down there. Right. Is there? Some value to that piece of land. Where? Yeah, go left. Yeah. Okay. And go Which hole? There. Hole number what? It would be uh, like Patrick, nine. Around, around nine. Around hole number nine. That's what you're talking about? I think? Eight. Eight? If you look at that, Over go here? eight along that okay, path, sir, like that. Yeah. Tr tr By the walking path area then? Or that From part? From the walking path back, and there's a service road that comes in, right? Okay. Along there. And I'm sorry, what was the issue with that? Nothing other than there's some value to it. I mean, if you ever wanted to have RV parks down there, it's an easy access. Oh, 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 oh. that's okay. interesting. Okay. They're semi-permanent structures. They're not you completely can permanent. They, yeah, they can, can be moved. moved. They can. I, yeah. In fact, I thought there was going to be some, actually, that were going to be designated to other parts of the community. So, I, I mean, I'm okay with this for now, but they could change. Yeah. Who's going to play nine holes anyway? You're only going to play one or two at a time. Oh, no. Maybe have a tournament. Tell up the hotels. It's kind of like, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we're okay with that? Like what? Croquet. Yeah. Croquet. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. yeah, I guess. Yeah, golf. You have three different discs. Yeah. Okay, so she's asking for different discs. Approve the land as presented. Are you guys things. in favor of the land as she said? Fancy. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't know that I'd put it on a permanent basis, but. I would. Uh, this is like a land use. It's available. This and is, this stuff is a, really not a, not a here. This is yours. This is a. No, it's we're letting just, you use it for. It's first. basically yeah. that we allocated to develop that. It's a it's a hole in the ground, and yeah. then during disc season, there's nets that are there, there's and you chain. basically yeah. throw uh, frisbees in. Frisbees. Are you wanting to put on there a condition um, until such time as council deems mm -hmm. necessary? Maybe that's not use. a bad idea. Is that what you prefer? Yep. Yeah. Do we? Okay. I'm like, oh, yeah, do we need to, or can council just decide that we need to take this land back because we need to develop it and take it back? Like, we're not giving it to them, right? We're permitting them to use it. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're just saying we're allocating this area for that. I mean, it's care. If it changes, it's, it's, it would be the first thing the next council is going to change. Well, I know, ours. but I mean, it's it's a different. It's an organization yeah. that yeah. is essentially an entity of the town. Like, okay. it's not like we're giving it to another group to use. Right? How much are they going to spend putting it in? Because if, if they're spending ten thousand dollars to put it in, and then we change your mind in two years, uh, yeah, it's five hundred dollars a net. I think I think I the know, total cost is around three. Yeah, this is this is. The, I'm asking that because I I don't know. Yeah. And sometimes you you thought they were putting a hole in the ground. Well, but they poured this uh, yeah. six by six pad to <coughs> create the hole <coughs> and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so as long as we're we're happy with that, and I'm I'm sure your staff can sort yeah. that one. Amber right. will come and talk to you if it, things are like. Yeah. The whoa. biggest thing is is it is specifically designed. That zoning in that area is designed for that use. So we'd have a right. pretty hard argument changing it to something different without yeah. freeing up lands elsewhere. Okay, they just consensus, show of hands. We're okay with them doing this? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay, yep. Get people down there. Mm -hmm. Alrighty then, let's move along. Finance Administration, Canadian Union of Postal Workers. 
If you recall, we had a presentation here by Geraldine Beck, who uh, appeared on behalf of the Canadian Union of Postal Workers, inquiring as to our opinion was on Canada Post's decision to uh, have community mailbox delivery. I understand from speaking with Andy Patterson that they've reviewed the documents that they had and they weren't exactly correct. They are not moving forward. Yeah. Yes. The information was old. Yeah. So it was just basically as info. Yeah. Okay, uh, 4.2, Boreal Forest Declaration of Common Values. If you recall, this was a presentation we received twice from Tim Johnson and Chris Smith as it re relates to the Declaration of Common Values for Sustainable Development of the Boreal in Northern Manitoba. Council's directive was to uh, have staff send letters to TOCO and surrounding RMs. Only one supporter so far that responded was Snow Lake. Um, TOCO said they would kind of wait it out and see how things go, and we didn't hear yet back from Flin Flon or the RM or OCN. Okay. So that was okay. our last directive, so okay. I don't know how Council wishes, wishes to proceed. Okay, I, well, um, only because I know a little bit about this. Uh, we should probably, uh, uh, if it's not going to be us, I don't know who's going to do it, make, make a couple of phone calls. Like the RM said they were going to do it, OCM said they were going to do it, uh, Thompson said they were going to do it, Flint Flint said they were going to do it, so if it's only, what, Snow Lake so far? Snow Lake. They're the only ones that said yes, they will. Okay, so let's, let's uh, shake the tree and see if we can get this thing. <clears throat> I, have a, I have a real, not an issue, I guess. Our biggest employer, um, our biggest industry, um, is is currently waiting it out. I, I'm, I'm in no rush to jump on to a bandwagon when, our, like I said, one of our major employers and one of our biggest industries yeah. is is not so willing to jump on the bandwagon. So I think if they see more support, they'll jump on it. Yeah. You know, I, I think so. so. Yeah, yeah. I, th I agree with you. Yeah. yeah, you're probably right. So, so let's just, um, I don't know if we can get someone to make some phone calls. Yeah. See if we can actually get Yeah, I, th I think it, it you know, if nobody leaves, nobody's got anybody to follow. And and uh, I intended uh, two of those meetings and whatnot. I was amazed at the representation we you did have from from big industry in the north, uh, and that and and high level. It wasn't it wasn't uh, uh, small potatoes. And so now, if we sit back and do nothing, they will interpret that to mean that either one we don't really care, or two. Uh, were not supportive and and a big part of this stuff was looking trying to look at all the players in the north that are are impacted and affected and and getting the communication going so if we don't move some of this stuff forward sometimes all we're doing is stalling the negotiations and they may not kickstart again easily so uh, I would prefer that 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 council look look at moving a motion to uh, to support it now and uh, and see who joins us maybe we'll be the leaders of those big businesses as opposed to waiting for them to tell us what we should do you know that's a good idea show them how to do it let's go well we you know we're, we're impacted with it all and business is going to make their business decisions whatever we do but by continuing and opening up those lines of communication and, uh, and pushing it forward, I think, is, is a good thing. Directive. Okay, so that's two. Who think we should uh, sign up? I have to agree with Brian. I think this when he was speaking, um, that was the third time I've actually spoke with this gentleman. It was to open the communication and get everybody on the table talking. Yeah. Not saying, we're going to do this and you're going to listen. Let's sit down and talk about yeah. it. Yeah, so. I agree. I agree. I would yeah. be in support of signing on. Okay. Okay, that's where we're headed. Okay, so consensus? Yep. Sign on? A resolution yep. to sign on. Thank you, Brian. Uh, 4.3, the Paw Arts Council request from the Assistant Chief Admin Officer. We've had a request to put a portable um, display board for use of promotional programs, and they want it right by the planter. Right now, our bylaw says that you can only have uh, a board for 90 days, and then you have to remove it off the premises for 30 days. I don't see there really being a problem as long as they follow our bylaw. And I would give some restrictions. You need to maintain the grass under it to like, do some maintenance on that. And if it's any kind of unsightly or wreck, that they need to take care of it. 
What planter are we talking about, Randy? The one as you're coming into town. Just on the south side down by Michaels? Correct. Okay. Yeah, just yeah. on this side of it. Okay. Sorry, I just have a question. Are they just wanting to put up this sign for the summer? I'm not sure. Just, I'm just I wondering. Because like, it'll be whenever they're going to be having their events. That's yeah. okay. what their whole idea is, is okay. presenting and what's going to be happening. And they know that it can only be there for 90 days, and yep. then it can't be there for 30 yep. days afterwards. Okay, I was just wondering, because they just asked for the one spot, so I wasn't sure if. If or you tell me that something's coming up in 10 days, I'm interested. If you yeah. tell me something's coming up in 90 days, I'm going to forget it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's just, you know. Well, I just didn't know if like, yeah. they planned on putting up a sign all summer that had yeah. all their different events for the summer, or what <coughs> they planned on doing. Sorry, that brings up, no, no, this is fine, I'm fine with the yeah. Arts Council putting up a sign on it, but it brings up another issue. There is, seems to be quite a few signs around town, yeah. and when I read that, and I seen that 90 days and then it needs to be moved for 30 consecutive days, there's been a lot of signs that have been up for 5 or 10 years that Correct. have never moved. Yeah. Um, I don't know what we can do as, as in terms of... We've got a bylaw in place, and we are obviously not enforcing it. Uh, we're following it, but whether or not it's being enforced is another issue. I don't know where we go in terms of what the recommendation is from administration was to send them letters saying that here's what's been going on in the past. Moving forward, our bylaw has always stated this: you've got this many days moving forward. This is the expectation. That's what to we count the days. It. Oh, it's ninety-first day. Yeah. No, I know that's, well, that's no. Right. no I'm, I'm not saying to make yeah. it a, a nightmare to no. to run it. I used to. Yeah. I know. I had the same signs in the same place for a long time. Yeah. Hey, okay. We're okay with letting them put their sign up, though. Yeah. I'm yeah. Fine with okay. That. Good. But it's just if we're going to be on on the, the arts council council 91 days after they put their sign up, we should yeah. be on everybody else 91 days later too. Not that. You know. Okay, and uh, I guess to receive his information, the uh, financial statements? Yeah, basically it was just an explanation in here that Lauren had said about the audited financial statement for the library, and there was a bit of a, like, um, an error in the invoicing, so they ended up with a deficit. They presented this at the budget time deliberations, yeah. but now they just wanted to explain it because we have to approve this. Okay, thank you. Uh, 4.5, payroll and accounts. So just give me one sec. Yeah. Excuse me. I'm here, phone's going on. Um, so uh, we would like a resolution of council to move forward with the payment of accounts of general accounts in the amount of 129,276.89, and also for payroll for pay period 12 in the amount of 104,785.72. Some of these are chemicals and stuff through the trading company where you're going to see about a $20,000 bill. Yeah. Okay. No issues? Okay, move it forward. Uh, 4.6 KRC fee increase proposal. Um, this might even be something that Kelsey rec representatives may want to discuss, but we've been having issues with... Um, we're not exactly recouping our costs when we're renting out the property, like when we're renting out the arena or the pool. We're not getting our costs back for the operations. So they're looking at coming up with a fee increase, which would be between 3% and 6%. This is all depending on the area of need. I did notice most of the stuff went up by 25 cents. Um, I know every time our fees do go up, we do get a lot of feedback that is negative from the community. However, in Amber's email, she is making it very clear that we can't always expect the ratepayers of the community to offset the costs for this. I don't know, Councilor Gibb, if you wanted to uh, provide any input on that. Sorry, didn't mean to call you on that. Um, <clears throat> we didn't have quorum last week, so we didn't have a meeting. And I'm just as fault as anyone else because I couldn't make it. Uh, but w what I'd suggest is have Amber come to the next meeting. Okay. Maybe KRC present what you guys presented tonight. That was great. And then everyone hears what's going on. Okay, good idea. So we'll wait and hear from Amber at our next meeting. Does that seem reasonable, Randy? Or, yeah, I or, think that's very reasonable. I also think there may be an issue in how we're, you know, our people are explaining the yeah. cost. Because I know uh, my son had called about having a birthday party back in March for my grandson. And he phoned up, he said, 350 bucks for the pool? think so so when I found out you know I looked into it and it wasn't that much but uh, you know it depends on number of people come but he was left with the impression it was $350 for a pool party and it's not no, no it's not 
not even near close to that. All right, uh, 4.7, outdoor rink, reallocation of funds. Basically, they would like to use the $22,000 that was left over from the ball diamond fence. We budgeted money for those repairs, and they would like to use that for the outdoor rink. I know we can also access more money by permitting that. Alan, do you have anything else you want to add to this? I know that Mr. Hobbs already applied for the Canada 150 grant. We've had some discussions with Sam and Chris about what needs to take place next. So further to my request about what, two months ago now. Yep. We're a little bit farther ahead, but not that much farther ahead. <laughs> it's a slow game. So uh, if it stays there, if it doesn't get used, then it's coming back. So if that's okay to leave it out there a bit longer, that's good. If not, that's fair too. Can you come? Uh, I, I'm just wondering, in terms of uh, whatever long-range plan they had, what item on that list are they talking about that they're going to use the 2200 or 1000 for? It wasn't. Uh, it was part of their five-year plan to have the ball fences done. So when the quote came, or when the final price came in, it was quite a bit under. It was the opposite of J.R. Cousins. It was 40% below. So there's all this money left. So what I propose is that, you know, minor hockey has some funding. Why don't we sit down and try and figure out whether we can do the next phase in that outdoor uh, Well, yeah, I guess that's what I was asking. If, if there is a next phase, what, what was well, it? And, it was never part of the, it was never part of the five-year plan, yeah. right? It was just, it was sort of on there, but there was no earmarked funds for it. Yeah. So uh, there's some outside funds that are, that are available. Yeah, I guess I guess I get concerned when when it sounds like we're we're sort of talking ahead, but then we're not working ahead by having a plan in place. And then you say, "Hey, money fell out of the sky. Who's who's got a plan that that matches up the dollars available, that's all not, ready to go?" Eh? That's not true, yeah. Brian, because we had a five-year plan, and there's three big items that had no funds attached. Yeah. So the town, we said, "Hey, we can provide the land, and we can provide money for the base, which we did." But after that, that's our commitment. So what, how it transpired was one of the quotes came, or the final price came in way less than expected. So what they had allotted for in their five-year plan for the fencing was quite a bit less, right? So now they're going forward. I guess you're right in some degrees. There should be a better job at, at uh, budgeting the amounts, but there's money sitting there. But you're val it's a valid point, right? Like that's why I yeah. said from the outset, if you yeah. guys aren't comfortable with it, take it back, right? If you're good, let's try to do something, but it's not an indefinite thing. Going forward, you should expect that when you budget things, you're fairly close. Yeah, I, do. I guess it, it's a matter of uh, I don't know specifically what, what it is in, in that. So if, if it goes forward, I, I don't oppose the idea, but I'd like to know that, that it's rolled up, it's in place, and there's not going to say, oh, we, the plan was bigger than the night dollars. Will, so uh, and this, or, or what I really dislike is when we do things and we underfund it, but we start something and then, well, well, we'll cut corners and make do, and then 10 or 15 years down the road, we're doing it again. Uh, so when I ask these questions, it's to get that kind of level of information uh, so council can make an informed decision. But I, I'll go along with everything that general agree, consensus. Right? That's why I say there's sort of phases there. I mean, the fill went down last year, and they put a rink on it. So yeah. that's a step forward. And next one, if you could make that into concrete slab, then you could still use it. It's even better. Phase three, well, get some holes more. Sure. Are, no. Holes to get inserted. Well, so that's what we're... Started. There's been some discussion about how, what type of engineering it, it needs. And so there's, there's different ways you can approach that. We've, uh, we've had a few discussions with... Uh, how we can move forward with the pad and accommodate the holes after if we had to. Um, it's really like how much money do you have today that you can spend. Like we can phase it differently based on the availability. Yeah, because that's my worry is that if you do the poles first, it, it's almost less usable than it was with just being a gravel pad. Yeah, no, we wouldn't put the poles unless the pad was there. Or the pad yeah, was there. either it's like a two in one shot type of thing, but if you can do the pad before the poles, that's cool too. You just have to design it. It takes a little bit longer to install the, the poles after. I think it's great that we're even having the conversation and we can do things about this. This is like uh, good to hear. The other quote we had for boards, they said you could healthy it into them. You didn't have to do, so we're getting different thick and edge. Thick and edge slab. slab. You just you that's that. a lot of extra concrete and that's expensive. Concrete. Just make it. Yeah. We're speaking <laughs> to a bit of an expert on it and we 
feel like it I'm just telling you that concrete's expensive. That's all I said. I don't, I don't know pretend. To Sam's going to the concrete show in Las Vegas, and those guys cheap concrete. Mm -hmm. He'll know all the guys. And the truck. Right, money. Vegas. He's a truck to haul. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is council's wish on this? Sounds good. I think okay we're good for them to yeah, re reallocating the money to yeah. the outdoor rink. Yeah, no, go for it for sure. Is that it? Maybe give us a heads up about what they're going to do with it too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't care. Yep. Yeah, do it. Okay. Four point eight. Oh. Uh, 4.8, uh, uh, Standing Committee's request from Councillor Morish. Um, okay, so in several meetings, um, we've made reference to it would be nice if we had such and such a committee to refer this to. Um, there's some things that I think may have been able to have been dealt with at a committee level and not come to Council, so I think we should look at bringing the standing committees back. Um, maybe a little bit of a different system because I know having them could be really redundant sometimes because you would go and sit in a committee meeting and then you would come and sit at a committee of the whole meeting and you would essentially have the same conversation over and over again. Um, but I think sometimes there's a little bit of a disconnect and maybe sometimes um, things aren't flowing through, I guess, as quickly as they used to when we used to have the committees. Um, so I just thought it would be worth having a discussion. I know in speaking to other councillors, they have um, voiced their opinion of um, it might be beneficial to bring back the committee. So like I said, I just thought it would be beneficial to bring it to this table and have a discussion about it. Okay, let's do that then. Let's start this way, work our way around. We're going to have a discussion about the discussion. Yeah, no, I, uh, <laughs> I agree. Uh, I've been feeling the same disconnect with, with some of the, the departments and that sort of thing. And, and I would be fine with, with bringing back the committees, but in a different uh, way, shape, or form than what they were. Um, sitting down and discussing things to come back to committee of the whole and discuss the exact same conversations we had at the committee level is not something I'm interested in doing, but if we can come up with a different way of how the committees are structured, I would be in favor of that. But to go back to the way that they were, I'm not, but I would like to see them come back in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I, I prefer that we have standing committees, but I didn't like the format we used before. I like the fact that now we, we use uh, issue forms. It comes to council. What's missing now is when we get an issue that comes to us, we can't say, oh, refer that to planning and development and have them bring us back a report at the next meeting. Because sometimes it's, it's a small group of councillors sitting around, tossing around councillor ideas, which are totally different, I think, than administrative and uh, departmental ideas about things. We need to involve those levels to get the right information, but sometimes in, in the general perspective of council, it's really good to have a, have a, a small committee, sits down, does some legwork, brings back a, a report and a recommendation if they have one or not, but it's done because council, everybody already knows what the issue, <coughs> issue is. It's important that the issue I think come to council first. If we can deal with it right away or, or some way, fine. If it needs to go back to uh, through the CAO to departments to get it, fine. But if it can be channeled through a committee and they are empowered to, to work with various relevant departments, because obviously if you're, uh, if you're dealing, in my case, in personnel, well, you would probably deal with human resources uh, and then have that authorized connection because we can't as council members you can't just jump over the CAO position and and reach in and do it unless you've been given prior authority and I noticed in and I'll, I'll mention Thompson's they had some pretty cut and dry uh, things a counselor couldn't couldn't do which is good because it leads us to to make good decisions as we go along if there's some clear direction in this, but I would definitely support reviewing, looking at bringing back standing committees. Sorry, just so I'm clear, what was your idea there, Brian? Standing committees? Yeah, for they would go to council first and then go back. The issue, the issue comes to council. See what I? I'll tell you what I didn't like. I didn't like as a councillor on a committee being t directed by someone, a department head or something. And, oh, we need to have a meeting, and and then. You come to a meeting, but I have no connection as a as a committee person to well. But council didn't say we needed to have a meeting. 
Uh, so it sort of came, we ended up with a problem that issues came to standing committees, they discussed it, and then the chair of the standing committee was bringing it to council. Well, tonight we saw that our new system now has department heads coming and presenting issues and things to council. We get greater clarity. You have people in the room that can answer the questions and that, and uh, it, makes, it makes for better discussion and, and moving things forward smoothly. Uh, so I'm, I'm in favor of doing it. Uh, we just need to take a little time to focus on how we tweak the bylaw to accommodate all of that. I don't want to give up this new system just to have committees. Councillor Good. There we're going. Okay. Well, uh, he just sorry. sat down, so he has no idea what we're talking about. Sorry. sorry. I think we haven't given enough time. Like it's so your point, Brian. It's a, these guys provided great clarity tonight. Right? And I think the issue is around us. We haven't said to Randy, we want someone here every week, or we want to. That's how it started out, but we never actually did that. So six months or 12 months into it, say, well, it's not working. It's, that's our fault, right? That's not their fault. We didn't do what we said we were going to do, and now we're here and we say, well, it's not working. Well, it's not working because we didn't do what we said we were going to do. So I, I with Brian, why well, I didn't like the committees. They were redundant. We'd go talk about something, come back, and then we talk about it again. It's just kind of a waste of time. Right? And then for us, again, to say we're going to defer it to committee, now you're going to have counselors in between the CAO and staff, and, and that could create some organizational headaches, right? Especially when we haven't flushed this out long enough. That's my opinion. Councilor Commodore. Um, I don't think we should go back to committees. I think with, with Brian and what Alan said, we should just give it a, a little bit more chance. And I do appreciate the managers coming forward and giving us a report. And then if we have an, a question, uh, they're here to answer us. If we just give the report and Sam or Chris isn't there and you ask something more technical, and if I don't have Andrew beside me to explain it, then, well, we'll go back to Sam. <laughs> so I think we can give it a, a bit more time. So we're talking about going back to the standing committees, yep. just to no. bring you up to speed. Sure. And so we're sort of doing a consensus around the, around the room. I'm, uh, I mean, having missed, obviously, most of the conversation, I've reviewed the agenda, we've, we've discussed this before, but my experience has been that at this point in time, I find uh, our time and the CAO's time is far more effective in the current system um, and the assistant CAO's time, because in the old system, one of those two was finding themselves tied up at least once a week, if not twice or three or four times, attending standing committee meetings. An item is discussed, it comes back to the council table, the whole item gets rediscussed for the entire group, and it, it isn't incredibly efficient. In instances where there are particular items that maybe should be referred to a smaller committee because they are of a unique nature, they require a great deal of clarification, then I, I can't see that, that the old system is more effective than the new. I think, as Alan points out, perhaps it can be managed a little more effectively and implemented a little better, but I think the existing system is a better use of everyone's time. Think, if Randy? it's being used. What do you think, Randy? I can see where everybody's coming from with the disconnect. Maybe it might be a matter even if a committee puts these together. Then this way you have your input. The issue sheets that I bring forward, maybe that's something a committee would rather do instead of myself. If you want that input before it comes to that level. I'm with you guys. Going to three meetings and discussing the same things and seeing what it started from from the beginning to the end was not effective because our committees, basically everything was resolved right there. And I do find this format does make the public aware of what's going on and what's the background and history of things. But maybe it's a matter if there wants to be involvement by the committees, maybe the committee would prefer to do these as, say, planning and development. Maybe that committee would want to prepare this form and bring it all to council will assist, but it's just a different way of doing it. Okay. I would like to see what others do, because I don't believe it was effective either, but mm -hmm. I do agree there is kind of a disconnect, and I don't know what it is that we could do to make it better. Well, not just that, but like I said, like there's sometimes where it would be nice to have, like because we're not ready, like as a council, there's more legwork that needs to be done, but it ne doesn't necessarily need to fall on staff members on a plate, right, to yeah. do that. So like that, if there was, 
something in planning and development or the airport or whatever, right, that there was a committee, like even if we don't have regular, you know, you need to meet, you know, twice a month to discuss these things or whatever, but just that there are committees there so that if we do have a need to refer something to a committee, that there is a committee there yeah. to refer it to. And I mean, again, like echo what Andrew said, it wasn't effective and it was really redundant to go and then to pretty much have the same conversation twice, but just, I think that there's something in the middle that could work to kind of bridge the gaps that we've kind of found now. So yeah, I'll just throw my two cents in and then I'll get some change maybe. Um, I just feel there's a disconnect too. I, I just, uh, um, you know, uh, sometimes we go a long time, we don't, we don't talk to like people from KRC, we don't talk to, you know, we don't talk to HR, we don't talk to, we don't talk. And so if we can find a way to um, kind of meet more often, um, I think uh, if I could just throw this out there too, I think I think as long as we're talking about committee meetings and maybe not committee meetings, I think we underutilize that room terribly. All of our information is in there on the walls, and we never go in there and meet anymore. And so we, you know, we kind of lose track of where we where we are, and what we're doing, and all of a sudden, whoop, something pops up on an agenda. So I don't know. Maybe let's have let's look at it over a 30, 60 day period and see. You know, here's here's some thoughts, here's some suggestions for change. We can all we can all play in that a role in that, and see if we can't you know. Uh, going forward, I don't know why I keep saying going forward lately, but uh, so council to bring back recommendations. Yeah, is what yeah, in the fall, about. like like September, or something, you know. But I think I think we need to get back into that room. That's well, I for sure I don't disagree with that. Um, having Amber at the last meeting and then having Sam and Chris yeah. at this meeting has made a has made huge, a big difference. Huge difference. Um, I feel like it took a lot from both what Amber said and I'll, I'll take a lot from Chris and Sam said to me. So. Granted, a lot of times it does make it easier when we are well ahead or well aware of what's coming in our meetings. Send those questions in to us so that we do have the opportunity to say, hey, yeah. I don't know that. Yeah. Then we could bring them in. But unfortunately, the questions don't come up until the night of the meeting yeah. and then it gets stuck an extra month behind, which yeah. isn't productive either. Yeah. So, so if there are, are okay? those questions, we can invite that member or that manager to come to that meeting. Yeah. Okay, so I think we all need to give it just a bit more thought and then see if we can't come up with some kind of a way to go forward. <laughs> Gee. Okay, uh, thanks then. Uh, 4.9, screened gravel tender. Um, we did put out tenders for the delivery of approximately 2,000 uh, cubic yards of 3 8 and down screen gravel, and we had one tender from Strokowski at the amount of 36000 plus tax. So the recommendation of the purchasing agent is to award the tender to Strokowski contracting. How much is that per year? It works out to $18. 18 bucks a year. Delivered or no? Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Is that a good deal? I don't. I don't have sure. a clue. That's, that's reasonable. Okay. It's not terrible. So, okay. It's good. So, yep. Thumbs up from Sam. Okay. Truck box four point ten. Um, tenders invitation was uh, for tender was sent to suppliers and advertised on the local webpage for the supply and delivery of a gravel truck box as per specs. Um, we had two, four, five tenders were received. Um, there is one load line that was a lower tender. However, when evaluating the bids, it was found that the quality was questionable. So they went with the next, the recommendation was for the next bid of Fort Gary Industries for the amount of 17,192.95 taxes included. For a truck box. <laughs> That's a dump truck box, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, just for anybody that might be <coughs> watching, that's not a half ton. No, that's true. Box. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, resolution. Yes. Consensus. Resolution. Yes. So, sorry. Just Unless there's you, other. Just sorry. had a quick question. Since okay. Sam is here, um, and he was uh, there when the tenders were open, what I guess was questionable that made the twenty-five hundred dollar less tender or uh, bid? The, the box is more suitable for more winter use, but not so much for the gravel and the heavy use. Uh, there was questions on the wear and tear that would uh, take place. So, uh, is that thinner gauge metal or what? Yeah, I believe so. You okay with that then? Okay. It's still, well, it's still underneath with the winter demo. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. 
Okay, Personnel Committee 5.1, Maintenance Director. Um, basically, for whatever reason, we hired Benjamin a while ago. He's uh, signed his agreement and has been working for us, but we didn't have a resolution saying, yep, we can hire him. <laughs> so this Just is kidding. formalizing him. <laughs> <laughs> we ought to probably kidding. get on that fairly quickly then. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Uh, oh, no. Deputy Mayor has stepped out, so who would like to take on that chore of moving us into move that we can resolve ourselves to are we going to in camera here? Yeah, we resolve ourselves to the in camera portion of our community the whole meeting with Mayor Jim Scott, the chair, to discuss matters of importance. Well done. So moved. All right. Thank you everyone.